The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. You're tuned into Chicago's most valuable radio show. And as always, we bring you guys the illest guests from around the city and globe. And we got sex expert Tayomi in the building. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> you know, Biko. I've never heard anyone say the word sexpert, and I don't know how I feel about it now. Oh, well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've welcome. seen it, but I've never, I don't think I've ever heard it come out of anyone's mouth. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever said sexpert. I was about to say, like, I don't think I've ever said sexpert until. Oh, y'all, y'all need to. There's too many in the world for y'all not to be saying the word. And you know what? Following one. It's a lot. I didn't know it was that many until after I got to know you. Right. What makes a sexpert a sexpert? Somebody mm-hmm. who has an expertise in sex. Whatever form of sex that may be, because there's a lot of different ones. Is so. it just the education of sex or the act of sex? Well, a sex bird is someone who has an expertise in sex. So it's, you know, they have a knowledge base, whether they had sex and gained that knowledge and they're passing it on, or they went to school or they went through a certification program or whatever. As long as they have a, an expertise and then they are professing to be that and then they are living as that and, and teaching the world, then they are a sex expert. Wait, so you went to school like to be a, a, a sex expert? I have a certification in authentic tantra, which is a, a form of you can say like sex therapy. It's it's actually a spiritual practice rooted in Tibetan Buddhism, and then the rest of my education came from self study over like ten years. Okay. So. I didn't necessarily go to like a four year institution. I'm currently in school studying uh, to get my bachelor's degree in f- digital filmmaking. Um, but I've been doing this work since 2011. I've been studying way before then, like since I was a teenager. Um, and I just saw that like black women were not being really represented or even spoken to in the space. It was like sexual health and sex education. And so at like 22, I started my blog, glamorotica101.com. And I um, sound like some shit I read. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please Check it me. out. Glamorotica101.com. <laughs> and for me, I was like, I wanted to be somebody who was like down to earth and cool and not just like some expert that's like all up in the clouds and like think they're higher than everybody. I was like, I want to feel like your sister or your homegirl like talking to you about sex and just like normalize it and make it fun. And I started a YouTube channel. And bro over here, <laughs> bro over here <laughs> has been a participant in my YouTube escapades. Look, you turn bro into a meme. <laughs> Don't you a meme? Yeah. Don't oh, is a meme man. out here. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was not afraid to go there and do things that like well, other men would be afraid to be pictured doing, which I really appreciate. Well, you, 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 you. Well, what it was was <laughs> being, 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 being that we from Chicago, you know, we have this thing about like when I first got into the when I first got into radio because you used to host for WindyCityUnderground.com mm-hmm. and that's how we got I, I learned about you and what you was doing at first I'd never seen you right and then uh, they I was, kicked me out of there yeah yeah oh, you know, somebody else's was mistake too spicy no they no. they accused me of doing something that I didn't do and they they just I think just didn't want my show there and so I was like I had a show literally late at night my show was like overnight nobody that's else was so there late. Right. So I probably would have been. So like so I met her through JR Bang when I was interning for him. Shout out JR Bang. Shout out JR Bang uh, when I was interning for him and Jay Washington for Educated Jay, Insanity. Yes. And that's when I finally met you for the first time. And I was in a box. I was in a box. I was a hood nigga. You feel hood me? Nigga. So I didn't know like Hot I, Cheeto, what I snack on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was me. I was I was I was I was that and it was like, you know, I wanted to get out the box, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was just jokingly playing on Twitter one day because I was working out. I hit the gym. You know, when you hit the gym, you feel good about yourself. So um, she was posting, and she was just posting, like, a lot of a lot of her work. And it was like, but ain't nobody up here representing for the hood, though. True. Um, I need to, I'm, I'm getting my body right so I could be in the next one. <laughs> she was like, well, if you're serious, you could be in the next one next week. Um, damn, I was just playing. I was just playing. But, I was serious. But she was serious, so I'm like, people on Twitter, I can't be no pussy. I got exactly. it. Exactly. Say less. Documented. Say less. So she was like, all right, bet. Meet me here. <laughs> Nervous as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous, boy. We did a few different ones. Yeah. So, okay, what did y'all do? So... <laughs> 
<laughs> that right. pause was so I was nervous, right? Because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. She was like, "Come in, black shirt, black drawers, black socks, socks." You, you know what I mean? He would be going on the socks. I don't understand that, but whatever. So I'm all right, cool. I ain't think I, I was like I don't think I got black drawers, so I get my draw go hit, wall, <laughs> hit Walgreens up, grab me some black drawers. Cool, we in the game. She was like, "All right, we're gonna do these positions," and I was like, I was real nervous because it's like, it's wait, a, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, so like these like tutorial like teaching oh, people certain positions. positions. Okay, so yes. I'm sorry, my but mind it's with was clothes on. It's PG thirteen. Yeah, it's yeah. PG thirteen. It's like soft. I'm like porn. that was on YouTube. Not even soft porn. We me got clothes on, but, but it's, it's on YouTube. Yes. It's, on, it's on YouTube though. Glamorotica one hundred and one. So. When we, when we, when, you know, we get, I'm nervous because it's like, yo, I never got so close to a woman. And my, <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So I'm nervous. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm in there singing my ABCs. I'm thinking football. You think of football. You try to keep the hormones down. Why would you huh? think about balls, though? <laughs> huh? Why would you think about balls? I'm not thinking about balls in that he way. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking of something real manly that that won't offset. Barbecue. You know. Uh, NASCAR. <laughs> I'm just thinking of Camping. A, I'm just thinking of a lot of stuff. So it was number like, jacket. But we got to talking, and she and she made me feel comfortable, man. And it was just like, all right, G, let's do it. You ready? You ready? I'm cool. Can cool. you just put a, a clip of that in the video? Oh, I'm gonna definitely Look, find that. Scroll through my YouTube channel, and the people on YouTube in the comments be funny. They like like <laughs> like about, about time my second about time my second shoot, bro. I was so comfortable. I came with orange underwear. Yes. Some purple and gray socks. Yep. I was like, because I saw the comments. Like, when you see the comments, you know they talking. So I want I want yep. to leave that impression. Yep, it was yeah. great. She brought me out. My, she the reason why I'm comfortable in front of the camera. Ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. Big shout well, out to you. you. I never knew. Yeah. Yeah. What? What would an Aqua <laughs> Jones look like? Yeah. I was shy. I was a hood nigga. You know, you, I, I ain't wasn't never seen the shy hood yeah, before. Yeah, I was like, not in front of the camera. I have. <laughs> Look, she like no, nah, we can't do that. I can't. I got to worry about you know the guys might see this, the hood might see this. I can't be. We the hood Chicago. did see it though. Yeah, the hood saw it. I sent it to him. They was on yep. my Facebook. Like you, I'm like I know she bad, ain't she? Dog? <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, you wish you was me, dog. Now how could I be in the next one? Let her know I'm interested. <laughs> on the real. <laughs> when I saw it, I was thinking the same thought. Like shit, how can I sign up? Because I'm like, look, if this don't work, I'm going into porn. Hey, <laughs> I got a job for you. <laughs> now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask you, Tayomi. Like, what led you to where you are now, as far as being a, a sex expert or a sexologist, or what led you to that? You know, to this position. The need. So when you go into any industry, you have to figure out like where where can you serve? Like where is there an opening? So I did the research and I saw like the um, sex education industry 10, 12 years ago looks a lot different, looked a lot different than what it does now. Right. There's way more black sex experts, educators, sexologists in the space now than there was back then. So back then I was just like, oh, ain't nobody talking to black women, empowering black women. So I was like, all right, instead of me complaining, I'll just do the work. And um, that's what led me to like to be here. Like. I started doing radio shows and podcasts like very early on, probably like two weeks after I launched my blog. What what year was that? 2011. Wow. So I'm going on nine years doing this work, and I've been on YouTube since 2010. So I've had my YouTube channel for like 10 years, over 500,000 subs right now. Shout out to that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Can Can I ask you a question? So... Just to kind of talk about YouTube a little bit because you kind of have, you know, if you've been on YouTube I'm since 2010, right? Mm-hmm. I was just about to say you're it's so OG. different now. All right. So how do you feel about like how YouTube has transformed and what has it like? What impacts has it had on your platform, whether it be negative or positive? Like, have you seen more since YouTube has transformed and started to monetize and stuff? Well, I mean, I was monetized early on, so I was making checks, but now I'm not because they say my content isn't suitable for most advertisers, which is cool because YouTube does a really good job at, like, promoting my videos. Like, I don't even touch my YouTube. I haven't in a few years because of all the changes that have been happening, but my page has been growing exponentially and organically without me doing anything because YouTube will say like most of my views come from YouTube suggestions. Wow. So I so I let it I let it ride out and I let it do what it do 
Um, but you have to be more like careful now with how you title things, what you put in your thumbnail videos, because they're real sensitive. Even when you're using music, especially mm -hmm. if it's copywritten, like you got to be careful. Because early on, like I used to use Erica Badu's window seat as an instrumental in the background, and it was fine. But it's like now I get all these alerts like, oh, a copyright notice has hit your video. It's not gonna, it's not going to be taken down or flagged but they're just claiming the rights to this music. So now I have to like, and I have a producer who makes like original beats for me, so I don't have that issue. Um, but it's just like walking on eggshells a little bit now because you just don't know what they're going to see is suitable or not. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I like yeah. the fact that you just gave us that perspective because so many people have had, I think, the opposite experience with YouTube now. You know, they've been able to grow their platforms and start to make so much money. And to hear how it has oh, it negatively, has, oh you know, God, impacted God, you. People. like. A lot of people, though, even outside of, like, the realm that I work in, because I work in the sex space, there are certain industries that have been hit hard where they've seen a hard cut. I mean, I don't – my checks weren't, like, thousands upon thousands of dollars, but there are people who are who are making, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars out of YouTube, and now they're not seeing the same money because of how things have changed on the platform. Mm -hmm. So um, – and plus, too, they've made – try to make it safer for kids, so they ask mm -hmm. you, like, is your content suitable for children? I'm like, no, mine is not. So, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all about it. Right, I'm like, so please don't send it to kids. Um, so it's a lot, um, but – YouTube has allowed me to be international. So, like, when I went to Nigeria in December, I sold out my class. I, I booked radio shows, TV shows, um, podcasts, different kind of interviews and stuff, all because I already had a following from Nigeria through YouTube and, like, the YouTube view. So anybody that has... Um, any business should be on YouTube because it's a, it's like the window to the world and more people watch YouTube on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I was like, YouTube and porn up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure to check out the ill list playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, what's up? It's your girl Pretty Ride and you just tuned back into the illest, the dopest Damn, the most valuable radio show in the city of Chicago. Like, if you're not rocking with us, then who are you rocking with? Hey. The wrong people. Oh, Damn. Hey. If you're looking at my face right now, look, look at me in my eyes. Look at them. You see, first of all, Shop Deja Vu Lashes. Oh, hey. Period. But also, I need hey. you to hit that subscribe button. Oh, and I need you to hit that little bell right next to it. Because you don't ever want to look. I like the way she said that, too. Notifications. notifications. <laughs> we want you to get those to your phone. <laughs> Speaking of notifications, hold on, right? Because ain't nobody ever made notifications sound that sexy. She just made me want to turn my notifications like, back on on my well, that's phone. A, that's, we I'm not gonna turn them back on just because she said notifications like that. <laughs> and then since we're talking about notifications, um, head over to your app store. Search Illinois. Download the Illinois app. Turn your notifications on for that, too. Notifications. We don't want you to miss a beat. <laughs> Keeping that right look, there. Right. Look, 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 right. We need that. Right no, look, look. Look. Keep now, it needless to say, that very beautiful voice you're hearing is Sexpert Tayomi. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah. Especially off the um the Jose, you know. All right. See the this the tequila up in here. Oh, man. Next time y'all need some reposado, though. Or some anejo. Some I, I, I like the Anejo. Pasado. Yeah, because like it's aged and it's smoother and it don't give you like no oh, crazy that's hangover. What that means. Yeah, when it's darker, it's aged longer in the barrels. So I think Anejo is aged like five years or something like that. Oh, you're oh, just a drinker. I only yes, I'm a spirits connoisseur. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> say, you know we have cocoa. <laughs> right, we know okay. we have cocoa, but cocoa, no, no. So, Coco, no, no. Coco, no, no. No, no, sé. No more Coco. No oh. more Coco. Lo siento. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold, hold up. You bilingual? You, you speak? Uh, un poquito. Un poquito Look, means I, very little. I'm very little. Much. Look, no yes. habla español. <laughs> That's all I know. I know a little bit of French, a little bit of Spanish to get me by. Wow. Did yeah. you learn that within your course as well at college when you were in high school? In high school, yeah. Damn, that worked. That Where'd you go to high school? Proviso West, P. Okay. Dub. I know a couple of people that went there. Yeah. yeah, that ain't bad at all. So, like, okay, let's talk about it because I got sis in the building right here next yeah. to me, man. So, like, you know, as far as a sex expert thing goes, you also talk about health and you touch on health a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's one thing that always i felt separate you from a lot of others is the health part yeah so like what made you actually dive into the health part because i feel like you do that more because i was a frequent visitor of the site too <laughs> and i learned 
you know, not to come in the face and all that stuff. I mean, you can it, if you want to, but, but you got to watch the eyes. You do. You could cause pink eyes. Look, and I didn't know, and I didn't, Jesus. And I didn't know that until I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know I could cause pink eye. Mm-hmm. So you, but you dived into the health part, and I learned a lot from the health part. Even the physical features. Yes. I learned a lot. Yeah. So, like. What made you dive into that? Because people don't understand how health plays into sex. You know, people think they can have bomb sex and be unhealthy or not understand, like, their genitals or not understand biology. And so, especially, like, I'm speaking to black women primarily, and I'm like, well, you got to understand health. In our community, traditionally, we we kind of ignore our health or we, we only get to it. When it gets detrimental, but we really don't do a lot of preventative care or even like research into our health. And so I was like, all right, let me break it down and make it easy, especially when it's related to sex, just so that, you know, there are certain health responsibilities that you need to think about when you're going into the act. So um, that's what really inspired me to go into it, because I, I noticed that like anybody can talk about sex. But when it comes to biology and health, like everybody isn't necessarily covering that part because it's not quote unquote sexy to do that. But you made it sexy. Exactly. Very. Exactly. You did that. No, thank you. That's what you Appreciate do. You make it. sex sexy in itself. Yeah, and people say that I like make it easy to understand and integrate and make it feel like anybody can like do it and anybody can like relate. Mm-hmm. And that's how I wanted it to be. You know, I want it to be something that's not out of reach. Even even if you're a paralyzed person, is there are things that you can still do to enjoy your sex life. Like, that's what I love about going to Exotica, working for Exotica. Exotica, if you guys don't know, is like the largest Let's talk event. About yes, the largest event dedicated to love and sex in the U.S. And I've been actually been to every Exotica in Chicago since they started. So we were celebrating our 10 year. This year in Chicago, it was going to be a big celebration and COVID shut it down, of course. Um, But the show is inclusive. Like it includes everybody, gay people, straight people, disabled people, black people, white people, Asians, whoever. Like if you're into sex and you're into love and you want to like join in that kind of like a party convention type style, meet your favorite porn stars, take free um, sex education classes, see like live stage shows. That's what the show is about. And like working for the show and being at the show, it just shows you, like, it doesn't matter what type of body you're in. Doesn't mean doesn't matter what, like, color you are. Sex and love unites us all. And no matter who you are. Like, I, there are some disabled people that come to the show. I'm like, this motherfucker is, excuse me, excuse my language. This person <laughs> li- literally living their best life. And it's people with a full, able body. Who'll be like, oh, I can't find a man. I can't find a woman. Oh, I've never had sex. And they know they want to have sex, but they're just so down on themselves that they don't even see the possibilities. And I'm like, this person literally is in a wheelchair, doesn't even have. They'll be getting it in. Getting it in. <laughs> they taking pictures with all the porn stars, got Look, titties in their face. I'm a titty. They got ass in their face. <laughs> they had, they, they, they go on a, uh, sex parties. Like, they out you. And what you doing? They in a wheelchair and, and they getting it in. And you got two legs and you can't even. Look. So, Fulfill your fantasies? Like, what's going on? <laughs> look, once you get one of them suck, you look, you, if you look at, if you walking around Exotica, because I've been twice, if you walking around Exotica, <laughs> I don't like care food. who you mm-hmm. is, and I don't care what a person looks like. If for, for all my homies out there, for all the men out there, I don't care what the woman look like. If you see her with one of these suckers. Oh, she, yes. And that sucker, if you go see her one hour, two hours, that sucker going to keep, you going to have to talk to her, dog. You're going to have it's to talk these to dick them. suckers. They're like they're these huge dick lollipops, and they're the most popular like thing at the show. Yeah, it's like dicks. a penis. It's like a little smaller than this microphone, and the ladies always buy them, and they did they just like eat on them throughout the show. And you see it get smaller and smaller and smaller. You know who got good mouth? <laughs> you know who got good mouth when you watching. see that shit shrink. <laughs> you just be like. I saw you 20 minutes ago. That's, that sucker got a little loose. So I moved on. I'm going to be back around. I'm going to circle back around. I'm going to get your number. You're going to the party. Yo. Oh, hold on. So I'm dead. I, I mean, I got I to gotta ask you, uh, Tayomi. Like, we, we were speaking on, you know, how you said people in wheelchairs compared to people disabled. Uh, then you got people that has full, you know, capacity of their body. Mm-hmm. So I want to know, like, um, is sex... Is that, 
you know, what what's how can I say this? Um, I want to make sure Is I say mental? this the right way. No, no, not oh. mental. Uh, it, it, what's the power of sex? Pretty much. It's whatever you want to make it because, I mean, sex in itself is just pure creative energy. So you can use that energy for positive things Damn. and you can use it to hurt people or hurt yourself. So it really is about the intention that you set in it. Damn, but she just it's neutral. Up with that one. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm I've just saying. I've never heard nobody say sex was a creative energy. And now it I'm is. just like, wow, it's, let's create. It, exactly. And this is why I look like at that, sex. Exactly. That she's the reason why I look at sex how I look at sex. Look that at one sex. statement, I cannot lie, on Illinois Radio Live on Saturday, look, July, I got a dope whatever sister. today. I just said. Hey, that's why I'm happy I, I brought it up because I'm like, you know, what's the true power of sex? I was it's talking to my about that earlier. It's very powerful. A lot of people, like, I don't know if y'all saw Nia Long's tweet. Somebody was like, man, Nia Long ain't aged at all. What's your oh, secret, sis? She said Dropped water. She said water, sex, sex and vitamins. So there are, there are a lot of people who understand the power of sex um, being uh, the life force energy that we are basically your chi so you can cultivate your chi or your life force energy through having sex but it's about the intention that you set mm. you know and, and how you're having it and that includes sex with yourself like if you masturbate specifically I'm going to say women right because men like when you masturbate and you ejaculate every time you're actually lessening your life force energy your chi you're getting rid of your Damn, DNA man, every stop. time you start Damn. you can, really? feel, you can masturbate but if you edge you know, if you edge instead of coming, but won't they get blue balls? If um, they don't come. They may be they their their scrotum may become congested. and They can massage oh, that's it, what and they it'll... actually mean when they okay. Because I never knew what blue balls really was, and I just said that like yeah, I did. but that's like what that means. Like congested they're... congested scrotum. You know, the <laughs> wow that make it sound so much scrotum. more like a medical condition. My ball is congested. <laughs> it, it, My ball congested. is congested right now. <laughs> <laughs> they got just sneeze. All the pressure, the pressure that built up from. Um, them creating the the sperm that's going to you know mix in with the seminal fluid and come out of the body. So if it doesn't come out, then the body's like, all right, what do we do with this? Basically, you can just massage your balls, and it'll go back into where it came from, and it will revitalize your chi mm. instead of deplete your chi. So that's the thing. Like the world tells men, like, oh, you gotta come so many times. It's healthy for you. It's healthy for your prostate. But and, and that's Western science. But like Eastern science, they've always been practicing semen retention because they understand that those are seeds. That's your yeah, DNA. Literally. That's literally a part of your life force. And the thing about male bodies is like, you guys have sex, and your body is preparing to procreate every time. Every time. So your your body doesn't know if it's just for pleasure or if it's for procreation. It's only one function biologically. Procreate, procreate, procreate. But men have to train themselves to become multi-orgasmic, separate the ejaculation for the, from the orgasm. So then you can still have orgasms, remain hard, mm-hmm. and without coming. So you, so you reserve your life force energy, you become stronger, and you still feel pleasure. And then you can feel multiple orgasms instead of that one big one. And the thing is, wow, w- I'm women, sorry, this is a lot. <laughs> women are just as attached to cum as men are, and it's because of por- uh, porn programming. So, so women feel like, oh, if he didn't come, I didn't do a good job, and it's because of porn. Um, and the expect, like, because we have come to associate Talk your shit. male pleasure with the cum. So if you don't see the cum, you're like, oh, I didn't do a good job. Listen, I go into Whole personally. could have multiple, like, orgasm multiple times. He just didn't come. Yeah, I mean, if he's trained like that, most men aren't, mm-hmm. though. So, But also, a man can still enjoy sex and feel pleasure without coming. So, like, for me, me for instance, I, I get a lot of women who come to me in, in, when it comes to, like, head. And they're like... I don't think I'm doing it right because he didn't come from it. And I'm like, did he enjoy himself? Did he say he enjoyed it? Well, then that's what I matters. Mean, enjoying some head now. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And say. sometimes you don't want to come. You just like, I just want to feel it for a little this. while. Like, give me five minutes. <laughs> and you going to keep going? <laughs> oh, well, all right then. What, what, what about with women? Like, um, what about, you know, some women out where it's hard for them to get a nut off? A lot of women have never had an orgasm. Yeah. Even women who have had babies. And you know that when you told me that, I was out here like Superman. I know you was because you, you was girl, really delivering just them O's. I was out here giving them to oh them. Oh my O's. god! I was trying to that catch. Was I was out here alley oops and all, but mm-hmm. I met one. Anyway, keep going. I ain't, <laughs> <laughs> it's not about me, okay? Actually, anorgasmia, the inability to orgasm, is like one of the major common um, 
female sexual dysfunctions and a lot of women they feel very like insecure around that the fact that they've never had that experience and I think for a lot of women it's just uh, their inability to relax some women have other like mental or health issues that could be blocking that there's a few different underlying causes that creates the symptom of anorgasmia but every woman has the ability to do it it's just you know a lot of times too men don't last long enough to even be able to help women reach the orgasm there's a pleasure gap happening. I was about to say. How do, how do you? Because I you, know we got how to go you to close that pleasure break. gap. Like, no, because like I have a very specific question about go ahead, that. Go ahead. So can you, is it possible for a man to train himself and his penis to get back hard once he nuts? Because I think a lot of y'all need to take that class. It It is, but it also Just has saying. to do with health as well. Because think about this. Say, because uh, men reach their sexual peak at 22. Women, we reach ours at 40. So from age 22 up, you guys are declining in your testosterone and everything. This is why it's important for you to not That's ejaculate so often. So you get older and you ejaculate, and now Damn, you're... Damn, I decline? Yes. Hold on. Bro, look. I ain't get that, I ain't get that information. Oh, uh, welcome. <laughs> look, my Facebook. <laughs> Look at, look at. No. I thought you I was, I was, I I was in my prime. Nope, nope, nope. I thought I was not. too. Well, I'm, we are actually that's going what I'm down. And then yes. she said 40. That's why we be wanting we, to go for uh, exactly. hours. And niggas when, be like, when we get 40, we get a whole other level. So I'm like, damn, well, I'm going to be like in 40 because I'm already a fucking savage. Like, <laughs> oh, Lord, be careful with me. <laughs> yeah, you was wilding out on Instagram that one time. When? When you, uh, I guess Buddy was like, uh, he was playing games and something. He didn't want to do something. And you was like, look, on to the next. I'm like, don't hurt now. He jumped in the car too fast. And he was talking big shit. And he ain't know what he was getting himself into. And oh, I'm like, man, they be doing that all the time. I'd be like, don't do that. Don't do like, that. Y'all don't This is why I don't, don't talk. Say about, nothing. This is why I do not talk about sex because... You don't know who you dealing you with. You don't know who you dealing with at all. Don't don't please don't talk. Motherfucker. Cuz then the wrong I'm gonna way be in. like, "Oh, okay. I'm gonna hold you to it." And if you don't uphold that, I'm gonna be like, "Mm." Cuz she knows, some, you know, have a nice day. But when 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 you have when nice you day. are a woman and you know what to do with your body sexually, I think that's yeah. very intimidating for men because it is. they won't even know how to do that to you. We, I be <laughs> listen. My boy almost spit whatever he was drinking <laughs> on the computer. The, the thing is, we got to get to a music break, <laughs> so we can get into Ace of two times with nothing I won't do. And we got more with Sexpert Tayomi coming Yo. your way, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Yo. Make sure to check out the Illness playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Illinois Jones. And right now you're tuned into the dopest thing that hit the street since crack cocaine. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Illinois Radio. And y'all can make sure y'all follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and all that other good stuff at Illinois Radio. I-L-L-A-N-O-I-Z-E. If you can't spell radio, I feel sorry for sorry you. For but you. make sure y'all subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and also click that bell on that YouTube. You feel me? And if you no, don't have an app. <laughs> notifications. <laughs> and if you don't have an app, you tweak it. Make sure your mama got it, your baby mama got it, and her mama got it. And make sure everybody in your family got it. We got my sister in the building still. Yeah, yeah. What's poppin'? You enjoying yourself? I am. This is great. Damn, this is the first podcast... No, it's not. I went on Leon podcast in person, but this is the second the second podcast I've been to in it's Chicago first, in person. The worst, second is yeah. the best, so I'll take it. Oh, wow. <laughs> we up there with Leon. I, I feel great. Hey, that's, that's the, 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 yeah. the dusty. What do you call this? The dusty legend. Legend, right Look, there. Come on. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm proud of that. Okay. Hey, shout out to Leon <laughs> Rogers. By the exactly. way, yes. So, what was your question, pretty? Because y'all had a whole okay, conversation so yeah, over off here. Air for the people who weren't listening or couldn't listen because we turned the microphones off. I decided to ask <laughs> Tayomi what to do as a woman when you have a very high sex drive because before the break you talked about that being cheat energy. Mm-hmm. So kind of break down what you were just telling me about when you are a woman or maybe even anybody with very high sexual energy, what you can do instead of just like having sex or masturbating. Yeah, because like this like sexual energy is fire energy. Fire energy burns through things, but then also it's creative energy. You know, the energy that is used to create anything in this world. So you may be feeling high libido, but that could be your body's way of saying, 
I'm giving you extra energy to power through or to power up to push this project out or to birth this project or birth this idea or thought into the world. So it really does take like conscious concentration for you to channel that energy into something outside of just fucking. You know what I mean? Because like if you're not going to have a baby, if you're not making a baby with all that energy, you may as well create another baby in a form of something that can make you some money or that can like leave your imprint on the world I heard and that. they create it causes it really requires for you to have discipline mm-hmm. and really being conscious about it because again you may think on like the basic biological level like I just want to have sex but you've got to consciously be like all right I'm feeling that but let me think about how else can I use this? Hmm, well, I do have this idea that I've been trying to get off the ground and it's just kind of been in a stale space. Well, let me just sit with my glass of wine and just sit in this energy and use this energy to power through this project today. And you'll set a goal for yourself. Like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm going to use the next three hours to work on this project. Even if that means like turning your phone off. If you know that calls are going to come through from booty calls that might distract you from Mm -hmm. that creative project, put your phone on silent, turn it upside down, put it to the side, turn your music on and get that project going. Three hours later, you'll notice your sexual energy or that urge will depleted, will not depleted, but it'll it'll go down Mm -hmm. to like a a state where you don't feel as aroused. But then you look at what you just did, all the work, you're like, you wow. productive. Right, you're like, wow, I got all that done in three hours? Wow. So um, it, the average person hasn't been trained to look at sexual energy like that. It's just right. like, I feel sexy. I feel turned on. It's like all I we know is fuck. horny. That's all right. we know is horny. And mm-hmm. I think I really like That's what you just said because I think it's very important for us to look at sex in a lens like that sometimes. Yeah. Because I think – when we're grown, when we're growing up from a child, you're taught that sex is just something that adults do. And if mm-hmm. you're thinking about something sexually, even as a child, you know, that's dirty. You shouldn't did that. That's naughty. So right. I think if we because I mean, think about how many kids are masturbating. I mean, I feel like that's when everybody starts masturbating as kids. Yeah, because so you like discover you, your genitals. Yeah, you start to discover sensations. that. So it's like imagine as a child getting that information like, oh, I don't have to masturbate. I can I go like I color. And or like, I could have held on to all this. And it's OK <laughs> to masturbate too. Held on to all your cheese. Yeah. <laughs> but I do feel like I do feel like young men need to be taught about semen retention. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to teach my son. You know, about like you could still masturbate. I think they're taught that. If, I, I think especially in the black community that getting the nut off is like f- a, a thing for men. And mm-hmm. y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like oh, if y'all off, if y'all don't get y'all nut off, her pussy was trash. It was some uh, wrong with her. her. Never trash. Well, blue, that I, blue I mean, balls hurt. Blue, blue balls ain't comfortable in to my, walk around in with. my ten plus years of fucking. Like blue balls I ain't nothing to be with. Never the Yelp review in the negative. <laughs> five stars only. The fuck are you talking about? She said no uh, one star pussy review. No one. This way. Oh my Period. God. Nobody hey. on the face of this I earth. Feel you five can't stars. Relate. Five Love. stars. Well, since we talk about uh, that, the Yelp, <laughs> Yelp reviews. I was, was going to ask you. Does size the size matter for you? Matter, size does matter. Period. Because genitals have to match up. This is what people don't understand about size. It's like. It's not about the dick being big. Does it fit? My pussy. Ooh. Does it fit? Yes, yes. Does it fit? <laughs> because if there's a if there's a genital mismatch, the sex is not going to be good. Mm. If the penis is smaller than the vagina it's in, she ain't going to feel it. If it's too big, she can't take it. So is there a such thing, since you say that, is there a such thing as a woman's walls being loose or is his dick just too small? For there is a thing as a vagina being larger than the penis can actually accommodate like and in you so, but can, it's not loose it's just your the penis is smaller than the vagina is yeah the size this, this house is too big for you, for you <laughs> right this house is too big for you my god you need to downside to a studio yeah. okay and then sometimes the elasticity of the walls may be a little looser than uh than the next woman and that's easily remedied with kegels like you can exercise it's with kegels and ke- you could do kegels without even realizing. I'm doing them right, right now. now no literally like, come wow. on every time I hear wow. the word I kegel, did my yoni yoga kegel. this morning so like, like you could tell uh private you could tell from the facial Look, Eastern science, Eastern Taoist tradition, they, like, Taoist matchmakers in China, they created a whole system to match lovers up perfectly by the genitals by using facial features. I didn't make this up. I just studied this. It's on her page. It's on, it's on my it's blog on, site, Glamorotica101.com. 
and by eyes, nose, lips, I everything. They say the the size of her lips on her face indicates the size of the lips. That's below. why I love full lip women. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean. Oh, the real. And then like the size of the thumb and the shape of the thumb indicates the size and the shape of the penis. Thumb is good. Wait, wait, wait! You said what? the thumb. Hold on, I gotta put the. Yeah. I gotta put that. She's good. Note. The thumb good. She's grabbing the thumb and girth. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So if the thumb wide, that mean they got girth. If it's wide and it's long, they got a thick, long dick. If the if the Damn, put my thumb up, paying attention I'm, to the nigga. I'm gonna be walking. Ladies, if you're listening, don't look at nothing else. Just look at this. Give the thumb. Like a devil man commercial. So it's not the shoe length; it's the thumb. Look at the hands. The hands tell it all. And also another thing. Hands are an erogenous zone. If you massage a man's hands or a woman's hands before sex, it is a way to like jumpstart so like the arousal process. Yes. Is that, so yes. is that considered foreplay? Mm-hmm. So, so what are other forms of foreplay me. other than just directly fondling with the genitalia? <laughs> Jones! <laughs> no, you threw it back. I was like, <laughs> I fucking did. Um, it, conversation. Look. I'm going to tell y'all one of the most underrated forms of foreplay for women that y'all just need to just, I don't understand. Hit me with it. I don't, un- I don't understand. <laughs> Food. Feed my soul and Food. I'm going to give you some <laughs> Food. Oh, I knew that. I'm too playing. But when, I, but when I say food, I mean this. like not on some, oh, let's go out to eat. Like if you know it's a dick appointment, if, look, you go to extra mile because she already going to give you it up, right? She's already there for the sex. If you have food waiting, and if she's a wine drinker, you have wine there. And then you have snacks, okay? Snacks, and wine and cheese. Like, look, <laughs> snacks Snacks are the, the small nibbles. We like those after an orgasm. That's great, because then it powers us up to go again, if y'all ready. Um, oh, but if I always you, ask them if they want something to eat, or they don't say nothing, because I'd be like, you want some juice? You want some chips? <laughs> <laughs> like... What is this primary school? Would like, you like a juice box, man? I mean, <laughs> you got a high tea? I mean, I got some wine. I be like, I got some water. I got some, I got some water. I got some. I got some Stella. Food. I got some Hennessy. I got some. You he like it. okay? I got levels to this, <laughs> but also like conversation. You know, really talking about it before you go into it. A lot of people just kind of play this guessing game instead of actually creating the roadmap to pleasure. It's like you won't have to guess. Unless you actually talk about what you like, people don't want to talk about it. They only want to be no, about I'm it. Tell you, I need you to bend this way. Put your but that's the thing too. Like I, I just told a chick, like you get. I like the fact that you can tell me what you like and don't like while we're mm-hmm. doing it. It's easy. It's fun. And I will say, if you have the kind of relationship with the person where, because sometimes sex is nonverbal, where there is nothing being said, it's no words, but it's just movement. So if you know how to communicate with your body. And your energy with the person. Just sit on his face. Listen, that happened to me. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. It happened to me yesterday morning. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I was waiting on that dick appointment. I was like, what time? Okay, I'm there at 1245. Okay, so I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it sounds like this. Pan- so the pandemic, you know, I guess right. it, it brought more, more people to want to have more sex. Because I see condoms flying off the shelves lately. <sighs> You know, it's so interesting because since people don't have all these extra um, worldly distractions, they have to be in the house with their spouses, with their partners, or they're quarantined with a bay, or they're just hyper just focused really cool. on sex because they can't be outside. So my work has increased during COVID. I'm an essential worker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. And I will say the amount of sex that I am having has decreased because I don't have anybody in Chicago that I really mess with like that. Most of my partners are around the world. So, I, you know, shit been shut down. So you have holes I'm an international. I have holes in in different area codes. I love it. (laughs) So, like, let's let's, let's bring it down because you got to get up out of here real fast. (laughs) So, um... I like how open you are on your social media. Okay. You tell, yes. you tell, you tell like not just the sexual part, but you also bring your followers into your life. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, you've been going through you know some health issues yourself. Yeah. And um, I want you to uh, you know break that down for the people. You know what I mean? Ooh, it's it's really like a a complicated thing because what I'm going through is like a rare situation. I have like a dental tumor mm-hmm. in my sinus cavity. 
my right sinus cavity and I went through surgery. That was supposed to be a simple thing, but then it turned out to be like a th- like three surgeries instead of one. Two of them were to save my life. Um, so I'm just happy to like be here right, right now. Wow. Yeah, it was it was kind of dramatic, and it took like three weeks for me to recover because my face was disfigured, and I had to do a lot to like get it to even look like what it looks like right now. And the surgery was supposed to remove the tumor, but it didn't. So I'm still in that space of like trying to figure out what is it for real and what do we do about it. So it's quite of a long process and it's becoming expensive because I've had to go to see specialists that aren't in my insurance network. I mean, it was like really scary because I woke up from surgery. They woke me up from surgery like, oh, Miss Morgan, you're bleeding out. We don't know from where you got to sign up on this life saving surgery. I was like, what? I was supposed to be a thirty minute procedure. What's going on? And like, now what you're are you telling mean? me? I'm bleeding now. Oh my god! It was it was just it was quite dramatic. And like during COVID, they're not allowing anybody to be with you at the with hospital. You, yeah. So it was scary to wake up and not have and any of my loved yourself. ones around me. And I'm by myself. It's my first surgery for real, you know. And it was just scary, but I'm happy to be here. And it helped me to like really focus in on my health, where I've just been getting everything checked now because before I didn't have good insurance or or like I had insurance, but it wasn't good insurance. So now I'm like, all right, well, let me check on every other aspect of my life outside of this. So I just want to say anybody that has, that has like dental work that you need to get done, please don't play with your teeth because your teeth go into your the skull brain. and mm-hmm. it uh, and it's close to your brain. Nerves. This yeah. is why the situation that I'm dealing with is so sensitive because we're dealing with a very sensitive area of the body. So I can't just go to any old doctor. I have to find those who are specialized in being able to remove tumors from the space because where it's at is close to a lot of nerves. It's close to a lot of blood vessels. And that's what caused the bleed. You know, the surgeon went in there. She nicked something on accident and it caused the bleed. Can't you sue for that, though? Like, is that medical <laughs> mal- malpractice? Me? Yeah. I wanted to, y'all, like with with everything in me because I felt like she should have did more imaging before going into surgery. But my lawyer was like, you know, malpractice suits are very expensive and very long because mm-hmm. they always fight back. And if you don't have any evidence of like permanent damage, mm-hmm. then it's not really it's a not case. Right. So I was like, dang, man, but she really fucked up and she knew that she did and she admitted that she did. But she, of course, well, she at least need to lose her license or something. Because if you know, can I write a Yelp review? I was like, about to say, <laughs> if you if you can admit the fact, like, well, damn, I I, I fucked she up in fault. her brain. Look, I was just like, please don't cut on my face, please don't cut on my mouth, and she had to cut in my she cut in my mouth, and I was like, will I be able to suck a dick properly? Like <laughs> that was my main really goal. You- I'm dead ass serious. I was like, yo, I could fit massive amounts of dick in my mouth. If I can't do that, I'm I'm screwed. That's how I felt, but I'm good. Can I? Ask I you tested a it. So like, it, like this is I'm this good is, now. This has came. Straight. This this got expensive. Like this surgery, <laughs> yes. this got expensive, and you still not done. With I'm still it. not done. I'm in observation right now because the tumor's still there. It's the size of a ping pong ball. It's like that big. Shit, that's kind of big. It's big. Poor tumor. So we don't actually know if it's growing or if, if it's, it's just there. Right, so we're in observation. I'm about to be on. Do you some... feel it? I know that. Yes, I do. Okay. I can't feel this part of my face right here. I can't feel none of this. I can't so feel, that's I where can't it's feel located? my lip. Yeah, it's right oh, here. Oh, interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you have a GoFundMe to help you with this? Expensive. Yeah, GoFundMe.com/slash Help Tyomi. That's, that's, that's a search. Oh, that's yeah. Search. Help Tyomi. Glamazon Tyomi. I mean. um <clears throat> GoFundMe.com slash help Tyomi because I do a lot of work in this world to help people. And it took a lot for me to make that GoFundMe because I just am not the kind of... for help is hard. It's very What's hard for me. I'm a Scorpio. Okay. November? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 15th. Oh, that's my mom's birthday. <laughs> 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 I know. I like you for a reason. <laughs> yeah, like... I, and she don't know. like nobody. No, that's... Yeah, I said she... <laughs> see, I got that energy of her mama. You know, that's and why she likes me. You know, you know, I love <laughs> But my yes, mama. If, if anybody listening wants to donate so I can continue to do my work in this world in the way that I do it, you know, I'm here to liberate black people, specifically black women sexually and, and black men too. I'm here for everybody, but black women I have a special place in my heart for because I believe that women are the metronome. We set the pace. We set the tone. And if black women Amen. are liberated, then our men will be liberated. So Amen. in order for me to show up fully in my work in this world, I cannot be in financial debt. I cannot. And these bills mm-hmm. are getting expensive. Expensive. All the medications, the tests, it's just, I did not expect to be going through this, but I had been going through pain for a whole year and nobody knew. 
Mm-hmm. I was just smiling and like continuing to do my work, but I was having consistent headaches. I couldn't chew on the right side of my of of my mouth. And it got to the point where I started feeling numbness. Mm. And that's what concerned me. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Am I having a stroke? Like, what's going on? It was scary. And all the, I kept, I kept going to dentist after dentist after dentist. And they were just like, ah, well, you know. We don't see anything in your you mouth. Know, yeah. Yeah. And it took me to go to like five different doctors to figure out what it was. And now I'm working with three new doctors to figure so out. So what if they like do an <laughs> x-ray on your, like, I know that, look, I mean, I know that sounds so extreme, but like, cause how did, cause I mean, if a dentist did, can't even see like We did mouth. x-rays, panoramic, the panoramic x-ray that I had done showed the mass in my sinus cavity. Then after that, I did a <laughs> CT scan. The CT scan showed it was completely blocked. Went to surgery. We found out that this thing had, like, ba- basically broken the bone in my skull. Like, it broke through the bone or the sinus cavity and was just, like, I don't know where it's trying to go. MRI. Like, I've had I've had x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, and I still probably will have to have more Lord. because it's just it's still a big question mark for them. They're like, what is this? So they know it came from a, a dental thing. Because I had a filling that was done, and that filling created an infection. Oh, so we saw the dentist. Oh. Yo, hey, look, whatever. Hi, Keto. Who, who, hi. Whoever the dentist is that fucked up her mouth. <laughs> New York. I, I ain't going to say no for, names, but he's in New York. For you. He's in New York, and I and I, like everything in me wants to just call and just be like, yo. You because should of what she has did, in any cases, it other co- cases like that, though. Because, I mean, if yeah, he, know, people be having bad But see, this is the thing, though. He did the work for free. Oh, it was just a favor. You, just you got to get it <laughs> repaired. His, I see what, which mm. cost to get fixed. Because he told me when he did the filling, he was like, the cavity is real close to the nerve, like a hair. Right. So he was like, I saved it, but you might need a root canal in the future. And then he put something in my filling. It was like an antibacterial plug, but I could feel it in my tooth that it was like pressure. So it rubbed up against that nerve created an infection, and then a tumor grew from it. And the tumor was there for a whole year, and I didn't even know until we got the CAT scan done this May. I know some niggas in New York. That I mean, I'm about to say this. I mean, it was free. We ain't going to kill him, but we'll beat him up. I don't right. know, man. He a Jew. I don't want y'all messing with him. <laughs> All right. They're going to cancel us. Don't put that come on, come on, come on, the video. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Can't nobody cancel us. Mm-hmm. We work for you. We work for ourselves. <laughs> oh, facts. We ain't part of Viacom. You CBS. Right. You we, we, we own this. We own this. We you fire right. people. Yeah. We don't we get fire fired. people. Facts. You right. I take it back. <laughs> I ain't never even said Let's it. Let's catch him laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it has taken a lot to figure out where it came from and what happened. And that's the thing about medical issues, especially with something like this. I look fine. And all my doctors have been like, you're 32. You're healthy. Your scans read healthy. Your labs read healthy. What's going on with you? Because you can't see it without imaging, you wouldn't think. And even like putting a scope in my nose. I've had several scopes put up my nose. Everything looks fine and normal. But now that my sinus cavity is like completely open, when you go in there with the camera, you can see See. that there is something there. Mm -hmm. Before it was open, before the surgery, you couldn't tell. Wow. So the shit's crazy. It's literally almost like a mystery. I was about to yeah. say, it's giving me like puzzle piece vibes, like maze vibes. Like, let uh, I hit a wall. GoFundMe.com slash help Tyomi. I was just going to say that. Let people know where they can Gee, donate I need, again. I, like, you know, the thing is, when you have a job, because I work for myself, I'm, not, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. And it's not like I'm destitute out here, but medical bills will break you. Will like completely deplete your funds. And I'm not trying to live like that because I need to show up for my clients, for the people who depend on me. So I need help. I did not expect this to be something I would be going through, but I couldn't ignore it anymore because if I would have ignored it, it probably would have gotten bigger to the point where removing it would have like become detrimental. So if anybody out there has it on their heart to give, please go to GoFundMe.com slash Helps Hayomi. We That's gonna good. put this Help within the our. Guys. It's gonna be within the post as well. I already Appreciate found y'all. the link. First of all, you <laughs> can put your dub that you usually smoke to the weed to my good sis Tanya. Yep, I already <laughs> found just, the link. I'm just saying, and there's pictures on there too of like what my face looked like. Oh my god, it's just oh, yeah. it's horrible, y'all. Yeah. 
horrible. I was like, am I going to be disfigured for the rest of my life? Like, I, mean, I really was concerned about my day second ability. I was just like, <laughs> Girl, so, you were so mad. I was crying. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Not am I going to die? Can I still suck dick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, no, once I lived through the three surgeries, I said, but can I still suck dick? <laughs> I was like, can I? But that's all it is. Look, look, I, I can't act. All right, man. I got a reputation. I got to help a whole hey, out Listen, here. I was like, I still need to keep my status out here. Like, what's going on? I mean, uh, let the world know where they can follow. <laughs> Get in tune. Uh, of course, let them know where they can see some blog posts and learn more about uh, sex education and more. Blog posts, Glam Erotica 101.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Real Glamazon Tayomi. You can also find me on Twitter. We have a lot of fun conversations there at Glamazon Tayomi. YouTube.com slash Glam Erotica 101. And if you forget any of that, the SEO, the search engine optimization that I have created is very high. You put Tayomi. I was about to say, it just came up. Yes. You put Tayomi in Google, you'll find everything about me or Glamazon Tayomi. That's just yeah. how popping Look, my brand is. I misspelled it on my notes and it corrected me. Oh. So that's how you know you're good. <laughs> well, uh, Apple knows me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>